You're invited to imagine what's next. What the next view you wake up to will be. Where your next adventures will start from. Your perfect space to entertain. And your sanctuary to unwind in. As you begin to imagine your new place, we'll be here to help you find it. Because nothing compares to what's next. Sotheby'sRealty.com Welcome. Vehicle emissions are the largest contributor to Delhi's terrible air pollution. These are the findings of a joint study by Delhi government and IIT Kanpur. Now, if that's the case, then it begs a question. How far should Delhi and Indian cities move to cleaner modes of public transport? We put India's metro rail network expansion under the spotlight and ask, are we rolling out this green mode of transport fast enough? Now, let's look at some of the data and, of course, what the Minister of Housing and Urban Affairs, Hardeep Puri, said recently. He said, India will have the second largest metro rail network in the world by 2026, ahead of the United States. And he also added, metro rail network in the country will reach approximately 900 kilometers by 2026. Now, we show you another chart for our viewers where the exponential growth of metro rail network across Indian cities since 2014 is very, very visible. The chart is right in front of you and you see it's spurting right after 2014. Now, take a look at the current metro rail network of the country. Cities with metro rail, 80. Kilometers which are operational, 851. And under construction metro network, 675 kilometers. Yet the number of private cars keep rising on city roads. So how do you solve for rising air pollution? Is a faster rollout of metro network the answer? Joining me on the show today, M.A. Siddiqui. He is the MD of Chennai Metro Rail Limited, which is the fourth largest in the country. We also have Sanjeev Kumar Loya, former OST and EO Joint Secretary, Urban Transport, Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs, and Amit Pat, MD for India at International Council on Clean Transportation. So we've got practically all stakeholders here. Uh, Dr. Loya, because you were with the ministry and you sanctioned many of the metro projects across India, my question to you is that it looks very, very good on the chart that we have really taken the net network expansion quite you know uh, aggressively ahead we've now sanctioned metros not just for you know cities with 10 million and above population but also 2 million and above population but is it fast enough looking at what we are combating which is terrible air in some of our larger cities the metro need for the larger cities especially is one thing and solving entire problem of congestion, pollution uh, and urban transport by only one mode is an entirely different thing because urban transport is just not one mode of transport. Urban transport has to be seen as a complete agenda. It is uh, land use transport integration. It is uh, different modes of public transport. It is uh, integration of public transport with intermediate public transport and non-motorized transport, uh, the pedestrian network, controlling the demand for travel. So it is, I would say, uh, uh, technological issues in terms of what uh, we are uh, is moving towards uh, BS5, BS6, etc. The, uh, the clean technology in terms of uh, the electrical vehicles. So I would say it is a combination of all. but. Considering the the expanse of the problem that we have at hand, it is not just one solution uh, with which we can uh, address this complex uh, urban transport uh, and uh, air pollution agenda. But do you believe that we could probably, you know, press the pedal on how fast are we rolling out just the metro network, looking at the problem? See, metro, I always say in a city it acts like the main uh, main, main uh, backbone and around this backbone other modes of public transport have to be built okay. uh, other modes of feeder modes uh, uh, they have to be built so so other, so, I, uh, so what i'm hearing sir like is that uh, the current rate of increase or the expansion that you see is probably 
adequate and it's aggressive enough. Mr. Siddiqui, uh, let me ask you, you're at the head of, uh, you know, Chennai Metro Rail, uh, fourth largest, but in terms of kilometers, it still has a long way to go to catch up with some of the larger cities like Delhi. What, what are your plans? Do you believe that you could do with more funds uh, and probably if you had it, you could expand faster for Chennai? Absolutely. We, in Chennai, at present, we have uh, two operational lines, length of 54 kilometers. And uh, currently, we have taken up one of the largest projects uh, ever taken in any city, any part of the world, simultaneously being implemented here. A total of 116 kilometers length of metro project at a cost of uh, rupees 63,000 crores, close to 1.5 million dollars. Actually, if you really see, we the, man, we, the comprehensive mobility plan, which the, we have uh, prepared uh, after great research, that requires, uh, require, uh, I mean, estimates that we need about 450 kilometers of metro line network. And even after completion of this 116 kilometers, we'll still have a gap of 280 kilometers. That would actually mean an investment of close to rupees 1 lakh crore that needs to be done for a period of time. And yes, this would be taken in due course uh, over a period of time. Mm. Expensive proposition, Amit Bhatt, isn't it? I mean, it's it's a catch-22 situation. Every city, like Chennai said, they could they need to go up to 450 kilometers of a network, but then the expense and the investments required are huge. The ridership and the commuter fares are not adding up to the numbers. None of the metros are still, you know, profitable uh, to speak, and they will take a long time to get profitable. So, what does one do? Absolutely. I think we have to understand that public transport is a public good. So we should not view public transport merely from the uh, uh, from the operations on the, on the fare box revenue and whether it is able to make profit or not. So that's a separate question. But I think a larger question is what is the intent of public transport? And so the public transport is to basically reduce congestion, improve air quality, avoid road traffic crashes and improve the economic well-being of the city. Now, if that is the intent, then we have to understand that metro is just one solution. Somehow we are think we are perceiving it as, as the only solution. I think that's absolutely wrong. And I'll give you some examples. So London, which has extensive uh, metro network, the buses in London carry twice the amount of people uh, that are carried in, in, in metro. Similarly, Delhi is one of the largest metro network, but still the DTC carries almost double what the metro is carrying. So in this debate of metro, we are missing the bigger picture. And the bigger picture is integrated public transport. Can we integrate our buses with metro? Can we integrate feeder with metro? And we are not able to do that effectively. And that is one of the reasons why we are not seeing the ridership which is happening. Second is, there is an aspiration now among cities to have metro, even if it means 10 kilometer of metro. Now, what will a 10 kilometer metro do for a city network? I think we have to kind of demystify this. And the idea is to have clean public transport. Yes, some uh, routes will, which are high density will require metro. But it doesn't mean that metro will take everyone to their doorsteps. So how can we develop an integrated public transport system? I think that should be the debate. And now we have electric buses coming in, which do wonderfully well. And once you integrate with Metro, you can get the best of both worlds. All right. We will come to that a little bit later. Dr. Loya, uh, you know, uh, let's take a look at then Metro itself. Are they needed in the kind of cities that they that you find them in right now, where the ridership is really lagging behind what was projected? For example, a Jaipur, right? Uh, do you believe that this expansion of Metros into Tier 2 cities, which are less than 10 million up above 2 million population was really required? Well, I would uh, like to address uh, this question in uh, two manners. Number one, let us look at our urbanization rate. So the way, uh, the rate at which we are urbanizing, uh, we will add uh, the population in urban areas in next 20, 25 years, what we added in uh, last 100 years. So that is the pace at which we are organizing. So it is, uh, and uh, these projects, they are uh, capital intensive projects, time intensive projects, 
and they take time to implement. So uh, by the time you make DPR to the time you uh, implement the project, sometimes it takes about 10 years. So you have to think ahead. So that is number one. So the 2 million plus cities, which are today 2 million, will be very soon 4 million plus cities. And then um, I mean, trying to find an infrastructure solution might be too late. So uh, as you see, a lot of infrastructure which was built in the time of Britishers is still lasting even after 100 years. So whenever you are constructing infrastructure, you have to think of uh, maybe minimum 50 years or 100 years ahead. And Mumbai, which runs on suburban trains, the suburban system was laid 100 years ago almost. And that is still serving purpose. Of course, it is not uh, uh, stretched beyond its capacity. And the kind of network which was uh, required should have been done uh, earlier. So that is one if you take uh, means with respect to the urbanization uh, which is happening. But as Amit also pointed out, and I also mentioned initially, let us not uh, just try to push one thing. Buses is extremely important. And uh, today, uh, the electric buses, so they are not only good quality buses, they are good quality from the air quality also. And uh, they are also now cheaper in terms of per kilometer cost. If you uh, um, recently the bits sector which were done in the national aggregated model by CSL, it was found that the electric buses are 20 to 30 percent cheaper than diesel and CNG buses. Even. Absolutely. So it makes sense to have electric buses, the kind of um, uh, means importance uh, in terms of the contract management procurement, uh, and, and its integration, when we say integration, integration is not just uh, uh, physical integration. It needs integration in terms of fair integration. Honorable Prime Minister in 2019 launched this National Common Mobility Card, which was conceived by Ministry of Housing and Ur Urban Affairs in 2009. And at that time, people were not uh, ready to accept this idea. And now, uh, with the rupee debit cards, it has been made mandatory that all the cards will be NCMC, National Common Mobility Card compliant. So that is fair integration, at least the fair medium is integrated. Next uh, level of integration might be that with the single uh, fare, you should be able to uh, cover a journey. Unified Metropolitan Transport Authority. So mm -hmm. there are number of things which are required. The, the street design guidelines so that the pedestrian uh, is uh, uh, taken priority. The form-based codes for implementation so that, again, you focus on the quality of built environment. It is just, and again, I will repeat, it is not just just pressing one side and trying to solve the entire problem. It's a huge mammoth thing which has to be taken along. So you have to press number of pedals together. All right. Uh, let me go back to Mr. Siddiqui. Mr. Siddiqui, uh, tell us. You know, I know that you are heading Chennai Metro, but are you looking at it? You know, the biggest reason I find people shy from one is, of course, fare is a big concern. Every time you raise fares in a metro, the ridership falls and therefore it's very price sensitive. As a country, we are very price sensitive. But this is there's also a last mile connectivity issue. Um, are you looking at an integrated model? Do you believe that that must go deeply and totally in hand, hand in hand with metro expansion in any city and every city? Absolutely. I, I can't agree with, you, with, agree with you more. But I agree with both what uh, what uh, Mr. Lohia have said and Mr. Lohia have said. That the metro system cannot work in isolation. It needs feeder system. The feeder systems are provided by public transport or shared transport systems. You know, the public transport system primarily is the bus transport population. And it is very important that when we make investments in metro rail uh, projects, we make a corresponding investment in bus transport system as well. Uh, if we really see, we have been making these investments of late. Earlier, we did falter. But of late, we have been making investments. Now, uh, for instance, in Chennai, the Metropolitan Transport Corporation is adding 1,000 uh, electric vehicles, 1,000 plus electric vehicles to its fleet. And in another 2,000 or 3,000 uh, electric vehicles, if there are buses, if they're added, then there will be more than equal, enough to cover for next uh, one or two decades. So, therefore, okay. this very, uh, 
It's very so, important. So everyone agrees that uh, the panel is agreeing that all right, the metro expansion that we are seeing is good enough. Uh, that's not what is required in terms of we don't need faster rollout of metro. What we need is a more thoughtful, integrated, multimodal transportation system. Now the. I'm going to take a very quick break, but when I come back, I'm going to ask a very cru crucial question. And that is, what will it take for the well-off and the well-healed and the rich to actually start using public transport in India? That's still not happening. I mean, the reason why metro ridership is low is because people who are using it are not that well-off and therefore it's very price sensitive for them. But why are people still using so many cars? Why are people not jumping onto metros and e-buses, which are better modes of transport? Stay with us, we'll get that answer. You're invited to imagine what's next. What the next view you wake up to will be. Where your next adventures will start from. Your perfect space to entertain. And your sanctuary to unwind in. As you begin to imagine your new place, we'll be here to help you find it. Because nothing compares to what's next. Sotheby'sRealty.com